Hello everyone and welcome back to Asian Gash and in this video I'm going to show you how to make your own army case which is going to keep your models safer and it's actually cheaper than buying it from a company. And to start with I'm going to show you what some of us have been doing in the past and already for storing models and when I mean some of us I mean myself because I've been doing this and one of the simple things is just getting a cardboard box and put in some bubble wrap, some packaging, something like that in the box to keep your model safe. Now, the problem with this is that I've done this with my flesh eater core army with things like, I've got so many cryptos, so many crypt flares and stuff. Uh, that's what I did to store my model because it was the most effective way. However, after being kept in here for quite a while, what I found is that ended up getting damaged models on the lines of like wings falling off, things like this, which is incredibly annoying when I found this out because I wanted to have a game with my flesh eater courts and then I realised that a bunch of the models are broken in there, which, you know, isn't the end of the world, you can fix it. However, it's time spent doing that, I would rather not, especially how the amount of time we spend on working on our models, painting the models and, you know, the time it takes to afford to buy the models, really, at the end of the day, you really deserve to, well, treat yourself in terms of making sure you do a good job when it comes to storing and transporting your models. So you might be thinking, well, I don't use, you know, a cardboard box and bubble wrap, things like that. You're not that stupid. Well, what I'd also like to say is if you go for the GW boxes, here it is, I put it here. Now, I actually have um, a couple of like the older ones, like the big army cases. And then I have three of these newer ones. So I've got this one, which I can't remember the exact name. I think it's called a skirmish case. Um, and then I have two Crusader cases, which I think are the big ones. And so I've got quite a bit of GW cases, I would say, you know, five in total. And of the new variants, uh, what are they? Crusader, about £80 each, I think. And this is probably about 20 so probably near about £200 worth of GW cases. As I thought, that was the best way to go, because all my models that, until this point have been GW. So I thought, right, they are the best ones to go for when it comes to buying cases. How Ever. What I find with GW cases is they do a good job in general, but the problem with them is I would say out of the 100% of models I put into a GW case, 10% of them at some point come out broken. And that's just because how these cases work, I'll open up, I'll show you. Shall I? So how these cases work, obviously, is that you've got two foam inserts, I actually have some models in here as well. So we've got some grave guard in here. So you have two foam inserts, one goes into the other one, and it's rigid, so what that means is that you can use this to store your models, which with Grave Guard and stuff, it's okay, they're just infantry, right? They don't take up a lot. But when it comes to bigger models, what GW gets you to do is, the design of this, is a case of just putting back the foam to be able to squeeze in bigger models, right? So by doing that, that's fine, and it generally works, like I say, 90% of the time, but sometimes the resistance in pushing against the foam is still enough to damage the models and especially when it comes to fragile models which is increasingly an occurrence in GW model ranges like if you look at um talking about infantry look at Luminef look at the uh, uh they called the wardens are they the guys with the massive spears you know the uh, those uh, ones that came in the big starter box they will easily break with those uh, big long spears in cases like that and that's just infantry right but then you look at more delicate things like how do you transport I don't know, um, talking about, you know, Luminef, Teclas, I imagine his uh, big beastie, you know, has lots of like jewels and stuff dangling off it. Or how do you transport a Keeper of Secrets, which I know I've had I've put in one of these types of cases and it's broken, you know, some jewels have came off or something like that. So GW cases are a lot better than the cardboard box and, you know, bubble wrap and foam situation, but are not 100% perfect, right? And then you can come up with things like, um, uh, I honestly can't remember the name right now, but I think it's called Army Storer or something like that, where you, a battle foam it might be, where you have these uh, big, big uh, like boxes that contain these blocks of foam. And then when you um, open up this box of foam, that's actually been perfectly cut for certain armies in um, Age of Sigma, Warhammer in general. So what that means, is if you've got a, let's say, Iron of Deacon army and you're fed up with your, you know, your eels breaking all the time, all that sort of thing, what that means is, in this uh, battle foam, army foam, whatever it's got a pod, just can't remember the name. What that means is that the foam is specifically cut for your model, so they just slot in, right? It sounds brilliant. And to be fair, it is really, really good. You know, the idea I have, or the idea that I use, I didn't come up with myself, obviously, um, you know, it's not 
arguably as good as that. But the problem with that battle foam stuff is it is a lot of money. It costs a lot of money to buy. And if you've got loads of money, that's absolutely fine. But the other problem I find with that is that because it's specifically cut like in the foam to store, you know, eels and whatever stuff you've got in your army. Um, the problem is, is that if you do lots of customization, which I do, and particularly when it comes to, you know, creating like little dioramas on bases and things like that, um, if you really want to let your imagination go wild, the battle foam stuff, far as I'm aware, um, doesn't really accommodate for that, right? Because it's used to going, this is the size of this eel. It goes, using the eel as an example, because that's something that breaks quite easily. This is the size of this eel, it slots in, right? But now that you've used a, a bit of scenery on its base instead of, you know, a flying stand and it's made it quite chunky, now it, it won't fit. So what do you do? So the solution I have is the ones that I have seen quite a bit before I started to do it because I never really trusted it because I thought it seems too simple to work and I don't really know if I trust the science behind it. And that's simply a case of just using uh, boxes with magnets. So. I don't want to turn it too far, just in case the magnets don't work properly and defeats the point of this video. But essentially what we've got here is my Sinesh army that I have recently magnetized all the bases. So if I just get a model out just to show you. Um, so you can see we've got two magnets on the bottom of this guy's base, this Chaos Knight as an example, the Knight of Sinesh. Um, and then we have got some magnet sheeting at the bottom of this uh, box. And what that means is that obviously when you put the model onto the flat bottom of this box, because it's a magnet sheet there, the model won't move around. But what that also means is because it won't move around and it won't move around because of the magnets instead of foam, that means all these lovely lances and stuff, hopefully you can see on the camera, um, means they won't uh, snap and break off. Now, I think a model just did fall over a little bit, but that's because basically I've jammed too many models in this box for this purpose. So I have actually bought some new boxes to try and make this idea even better. So this is an idea that I originally saw on the internet and then I thought like, oh, it probably doesn't work. It probably sounds too good to be true. And then um, when people I knew started doing it themselves and I was like, oh, it actually works and it saves you a bunch of money. So that's the idea. And basically in this video, like I said, I am going to be making one of these boxes for you guys to show you how you can do it as well. And I learned how to do this by, you know, watching a tutorial on YouTube. But as I thought, not a lot of people are aware of this or, fully trust it and if you people enjoy my content on my channel hopefully this might be the first video you see of how to make a um, magnetic box for storing and keeping your models um, so hopefully this will inspire you to do it and especially like how much cheaper it is which obviously I have costs and stuff can't late in this video to show you how much money you can save is really a fantastic idea. A cutting mat, a cutting knife, magnet sheeting, a ruler magnets for your model's bases, and super glue. And then of course, the box itself. And the first thing you wanna do is lay out that magnetic sheeting onto the base of the box you're gonna be using for your army case. And then you want to try and fit as much of this magnetic sheeting to cover as much of the base of that box as possible. So as you can see here in my example, I've managed to fit two A4 sheets in quite nicely. And then when I go to put down the third one, you will see that there is a bit of an overlap. And this is when we're gonna to have to start being a bit more customizing how we fit our magnetic sheet into the base of our box. So what we're going to need to do is you're going to want to get a pen or a pencil, and you're gonna to wanna to mark out where the edges of where the overlap is and where you're going to need to trim your third and fourth um, A4 sheet down. So what you wanna do is you wanna make a mark on like I say, each bit on the ends where the overlap is. And then if you use the ruler that we mentioned earlier to draw a line just to help yourself out when you comes to cutting the mat. And then when you've laid all four bits of that magnetic sheeting onto the base and you've marked out where you need to cut then the next thing is to cut that magnetic sheet in. So you're going to want to line up nicely on the cutter mat. Obviously, if you are a bit younger, if you need help, make sure that you've got an appropriate adult to help you with the cut on this because you can badly cut yourself. And if you can get a metal ruler, I've got a plastic one in the video, but that's just because I didn't have a metal one available. And then simply just cut along the line that you drew out just before this. And then if you need to do a little bit more trimming here and there, just make sure it fits, that's absolutely fine. And then go back to the box to make sure it all fits in nice and tightly. 
And then the next thing we're going to want to do is glue the magnetic sheet into the base of our box. Like I said, I'm just using Gorilla Glue, but you can use any strong super glue to do this. Now, of course, when you are doing this, just be careful that you don't get glue on your hands. You can use things like gloves and stuff just to try and help you out. As you can see, when I'm doing this on the video, your hands do get quite close to the glue because you're going to need a lot of glue to do this job. And I actually bought two tubs of super glue from Gorilla, which were 15 uh, gram ones, and I probably used about two thirds of just one of them and I bought two because I wanted to make sure that I didn't run out because there's nothing going to be more annoying than you're halfway through this and you've run out of glue because you don't want to use it sparingly you want to use a lot like I said and then also I've got two more boxes to make at least of this for my armies and I plan to make more in the future so I'm always going to use that super glue so make sure you get more than you think you might need with this basically and then when you are laying it down onto the base of the box you want to make sure because you haven't got very long to you know fit it right and sort it out you want to line it up best you can and you want to make sure that all the magnetic sheetings where there might be a tiny bit of a gap on the right and left hand side of the box you can see um that's simply because the metal sheet isn't just long enough by about a quarter of an inch or something that's fine but you want to make sure that all the magnetic sheeting touches itself in the middle because then that means that when you're putting down your models with the magnets on their bases you're not going to accidentally put them down where there's a gap and then the model might fall over and there's more chance of that happening if you leave gaps in the middle of the box rather than the edges so you want to make sure it's all nice and tight but you also don't want to make sure that it's so tight that the actual edges of the magnetic sheeting is folding up the box because that is going to reduce the flat surface that you're going to be putting your models on at the end of the day. And the other thing I will say about this is that you want to make sure you do this outside. You might be able to tell there's a bit of sunlight and stuff in the video and that's because the first box I've done of this where I showed you my Sinesh army was in it, I actually did that in the house and I can tell you the amount of fumes that was coming from the uh, super glue I was using was insane. And I think it was just like a simple sort of like army painter one I was using then and the fumes actually like stung my eyes because of just like how much of a confined space I was doing it in. If you've got a garden, do it outside. You can, if you haven't got a garden, try and use it in like the biggest room you've got in your house, like next to a window or something, just so you're getting plenty of fresh air in. That's the biggest advice I can say to you. And on that note, if you haven't got a garden, make sure you leave the box when you're done up by that window. Or if you have a garden, leave it in the garden. Obviously, make sure that no rain gets on it and all that sort of thing. And you're going to want to leave it there for a while. And essentially, basically, why that is is because when the super glue uh, dries and evaporates it turns into a sort of like powdery dust that might be why you if you ever use quite a bit of super glue before when your models or something like that it might end up getting like a bit of like a powdery sort of dust everywhere and that's like from where the glue has evaporated as far as I'm aware so what that means is that if essentially you glue all this magnetic sheeting onto the base here and then you just glue it and then you go right okay I'm going to put the lid on it now put it in my house absolutely fine you open the lid and you'll find that there's lots of like this white powdery stuff everywhere from where the glue has dried. And what that's going to mean is now when you put models in your case, they're going to end up having like white powder on them, which is going to be quite annoying, basically. So make sure you leave this with the lid off outside for honestly, like I left outside for probably about four hours or something. And then when I brought it inside, because it got dark, I left it in the house with the lid off for the entire night just to be safe so honestly when you're doing this job it's going to take about you know like a, a day two days to do because there's no point rushing it because you're just going to ruin it essentially so take your time with it make sure that all the super glue when it does dry and the, the fumes evaporate it does it nicely without trapping all this dust within the box itself so now that that is done the next thing to do is going to be to glue these magnets that i showed you earlier onto the bases of your models now essentially pick the appropriate magnet for the appropriate base um, if anything, I always go a bit bigger than I need to. And when you're buying these magnets, what I will say is it's always good to buy like a variety pack or if you're buying loads of magnets because you've got such a big army, obviously you can buy like a pack of the big ones, pack of the medium ones, pack of the small ones, etc. Um, the biggest thing I will say for you guys though is to get magnets that are two millimeters thick. And the reason for that is, is because it's the perfect size to fit underneath the bases of your Games Workshop models. It means it'll fit nicely in there without overhanging or being too short. The other thing I will say as well, just to mention, is why I found out with my Sinesh Army is because I've got Shattered Dominion bases, I believe they're called, like the heroic sort of bases Games Workshop does. 
Obviously, the underneath of the base is not completely hollow, so you're gonna maybe want a bit thinner magnets for that job because you don't have as much space, essentially. So you're gonna wanna do that, and when you do this, just put a dot of uh, super glue onto the base where you're gonna wanna put the magnet. And my biggest advice for you is that if the model is slightly heavy on one side already, I don't know, you've got a rock on the base or just how the model was leaning or there's a banner or something, put the magnet on the opposite side of the base because the magnet is going to weigh a fair amount on that model. So if you put it on the bit where the model's already top heavy anyway, it's just gonna fall over, right? So put it on the opposite side. And the other thing I will say when it comes to biomagnets is make sure you get the magnets that are, you know, a bit strong, but not overly the top. Because if you get magnets that are too strong, when you line all your models up, essentially they're gonna all want to crash together if they're really, really powerful. So just bear that in mind. And then, yeah, like I say, put a drop of super glue onto the base of your model where you're gonna wanna put that magnet. And then the other thing I'll just quickly mention is the first time I did this, I thought it would be a better idea to put the super glue onto the magnet and then for me to put the magnet into my hand and then for me to try and put the magnet from my fingers onto the base. That's just an idiotic way to do it and you're just gonna end up with super glue on your hands. So don't do that. And essentially just take your time doing this. When you are gluing these magnets onto the models, onto their bases, when you're done doing that, turn the model on its side obviously make sure you don't just you know throw it on its side and break it you know gently put it on its side and make sure that when the super glue dries like we did when we put down the magnetic sheeting in the box it means that all the powder all the sort of like fumes from the glue can evaporate you know outwards and it's not going to make the bottom of your base completely dusty and that's the other reason why we're not going to essentially after the glue's dry for about 15 minutes we're not going to put the model straight into the case because you're just getting up with the white powder from the model's base from that magnet you glued on onto the box and then you just cause the same problem again so you're going to want to keep them out like in all honesty i'd say you could probably wait two hours at least to be able to put them back in the case you know if you're a bit of a rush but if you're not in a rush just leave the models on the side honestly i think i left it like that for probably about eight hours just to be extra safe and all that sort of thing so i know when i'm going to put my models back into my case i'm not going to end up with them going to be covered in dust and getting dirty and all that sort of thing and you can see, as I've been doing this with part of my Flesh Eater Court Army, like I said at the start of the video, I've really got a mixture of things in here. I've got, you know, things like your Ghoul Kings, I've got Crypt Horrors, Crypt Flares, Vargolfs, and then I've even got big things like Terror Geist, Zombie Dragons, and then even like a, a massive Terror Geist I've put into a forest base, right? I've put it into the old Sylvaneth Wildwood. And what that means is that if you want to use this to put your terrain into a box as well, that's possible, you know, if you put magnets onto the bases of your terrain, and that's how you do it, um, like I've done for that particular Terra Geist, you can use it as a way to store your terrain instead of it being put in just into a normal box and being annoyed every time you pull it out and like a, a branch has snapped off the tree or something like that, it just stops all those sorts of problems. And as you can see, when I pick up this box and shift it around a bit, you can see that the models are not falling from one side to the other. Again, like I say, if you completely turn to a side, the models will fall over. So if you are doing a lot of traveling, like going on trains or planes and stuff for your models, you know, you're going to want to get something at the end of the day with a lot of padding and stuff in it as well. But you could put that in here, you could chuck loads of bubble wrap in here and stuff, and you probably wouldn't really have too much of a problem. But obviously if you are getting on a lot of public transport and big things like trains and planes and all that sort of thing where you're going to want to be moving your box all over the place, of course get those big padded boxes. But for most people, you know, if you are driving or if you are just storing your models at home and they're not going on all these great adventures, this will be absolutely perfect for you. And with that, that is the box done. It didn't really take too long to do either. And it's one of those things where, like I said, this is the second box I've done of this type, like um, one I showed you at the start of the video. This is the first one I did. This is the second one and certainly, you know, the biggest one I've done. Um, the more you do it, the more you learn how to do it properly and you know, the need to your cutting and all that sort of thing comes with it. But you know, it's fairly easy to do just off the bat. And what that means is that eventually I'm going to have a big box like this for every single one of my collections and then what that means is you know in your garage in a spare room something like that if you do have one in your basement if you're from America or whatever you can just have each one of these boxes on a shelf and what that also means instead of just being for protecting your models and transporting them and everything else it organizes and sorts out your collection where before when I've been going with like I said these like GW boxes, what it means is even the big Crusader ones, they go, yeah, they're, they're great and everything else. And, um, you know, it's fantastic. But I've managed to fit, let's say my Slave Darkness Army, I can fit, you know, most things in there. If I 
really quietly, you know, and really precisely pack everything. What about our care? Well, he can't go in there. He needs his own separate box, right? Okay, what does that mean? So it's going to be a, a big cardboard box to chuck loads of like packing foam and stuff in it for just when I need to transport him. Right, what a pain to try and like sort out every time. Whereas I could just magnetize in here, a lot of magnets with that guy, but it's the same with everything else. And it means when you're putting your models back or if you go into a tournament, you're moving from table to table, you can put your models in and out of this really easily, really quickly, um, and beyond anything else, safely as well, knowing that your models aren't gonna fall over. Now, like I said, when I was showing you this particular box, I wouldn't, you know, go, oh, it's magnetic, I'm gonna flip upside down. Like, it, it's not gonna be that strong, or certainly I do not wanna test it, particularly how heavy some of your models might be. Um, but what I can say with this is that if you tilt it, you know, probably, what, well, let's say, let's get it here, shall we? Just use this GW1 as an example. If this was the magnetic box, if you were to go like that sort of thing, it would be okay. And to be honest, that's as far as you're gonna be moving it anyway. Like if you're gonna go like that with the box, again, it's not probably gonna work and some of the models might get broken. And then if you are going to be, for some reason, doing like acrobats with your uh, army cases, then stick to a Games Workshop one or another company. But if you're not gonna be doing that, and you're like most people, just get yourself one of these big boxes, can be from any company, like I said, I like these ones as they're strong and hardy and to be honest, they're not too expensive for the quality you get um, because I think it's worth spending that little bit of money for models that you've already spent a lot of money, mainly time obviously building and painting them and you know, your love you've gone into them. So you do want to protect them because like I said, when I opened this box and I realized I had a bunch of models to fix, it's never a fun feeling, especially when that meant I couldn't really take them to that game. So with that, guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope you had something taken away from it. And also, if you have any more questions or you've got any more tips if you've been doing this yourself, put that in the comments down below and I'll learn from it or everyone else watching this video will learn from your experience. Or if you're asking a question, that means that I'll be able to try and help you best I can. And you've got any more suggestions for any more videos you'd like to see, put that in the comments down below as well. And if you did enjoy the video, make sure you smash the like button, subscribe button and the bell notification. Free easy buttons to press, massively helps support the channel and it's absolutely free, which is brilliant. And if you feel like you know someone who enjoy this video, make sure you share them. And also, if you wanna join the Asian uh, Nagash, get that right, community, make sure you join the Discord down below in the description of this video, where it's an amazing community. Just a great escape away from like the real life problems at the moment, all that sort of thing, just talking about hobby and um, everyone having a great time and sharing great tips with each other. Anything from like list building to army collecting to uh, building and painting to law, to news, so much stuff going on there. So join that if you'd like to. Also, if you would like to, as I mentioned, support the channel, there is a join button, there's a subscribe button, and then there is a link to my Patreon, which is at the top of the description down below. And what I will say about that is that all the money that I am being given from last month and then this month from YouTube and Patreon, which at the moment, like I say, is about uh, roughly 90 pounds a month, and that's all going straight to um, charities to help out the situation in Ukraine. So that's things like um, the Red Cross and stuff like that. And I actually did a donation from the channel um, last night, which was a uh, hundred pounds. So that's just to let you guys know that all the support you've given to the channel has gone directly to help um, people who really, really need it over there, refugees, etc. I think it was something like 60 pounds or 70 pounds bought like 60, you know, those like Thin mattresses you can use for camping and all that sort of thing so the money you guys have given to the channel has managed to make people you know like 60 people if not more sleep easier at night or it said something along the lines of the 100 pounds allows them to be able to set up enough equipment for a medic in a, a refugee camp or something like that or supplies the medic with the medical supplies they need to be able to do their job over there which is absolutely amazing I just thought um, something to just tell you guys, uh, you know, fantastic. Thank you for that support, uh, for helping those people, lovely. And um, hopefully we'll continue that going forward. And again, if you would like to support the channel, the money will go straight to those charities, but I'm not trying to like um, leech on that or anything. I would recommend you guys support directly to the charities because uh, Patreon and YouTube will take a cut before it gets to me. So if you're not a member or anything already, just support the charities that way. It's better than doing it through me. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for that. It really is helping people in desperate need. And um, the people who were partly responsible for that are gonna be my patrons and my YouTube members. So I'm just gonna read through their names now as they are absolutely heroes. So my biggest support is my Vampire Lord on Zombie Dragon, if I haven't already mentioned that title enough in this video. And that's gonna be Philco. So Philco, thank you so much for all the support you give the channel. Honestly, it makes a huge difference in keeping the channel going, but obviously, 
like I said, at the moment, it's a huge amount of support you're giving to help people, so thank you so much for keeping up. And then my Morgasp being Bleed Red and Gold Swept Dandy. Guys, thank you so much for giving a lot of support, especially at that tier. Again, being a Morgasp, there's a lot of support you're giving and you're helping, so it does make a big difference. Thank you so much. And then my Vampires, who always says the court that keeps us going, it's going to be Ben C, Rouse321, David A, Dragon Nitty, Ronnie H, Darren L, Spare Bear, Christopher H, Nathan Drop, Nathan F, Andrew G, Tom W, Wiggy Hootie, and Nathan S. Guys, thank you all so much for doing that. And thank you as well, particularly for my vampires, for being able to stick through with the channel as we've been going through quite a bit of a dry bit at the moment with in terms of content for me being able to put out uh, just due to real life being busy. So thank you all so much for being able to keep that up. So I know a lot of you guys have been supporting for a long time. And then, of course, my necromancers who just consistently give support to the channel is going to be Jack L, Wolf Nick, AW77. Tom M, Michael W, Cranky Wombat, Christopher C, Christopher F, Steve T, James T, James S, Thomas B, Patrick F, JJ, R, Christopher, Seption, Sean S, Gordon W, and Val. Guys, thank you all so much for the support you give. And like I say, at the moment, it's going to so much more important than help keeping the channel going. So please keep it up. It really is helping. And with that, guys, anyone like to become a supporter help out that way like I say patreon link in the description down below anything from dollar a month and then click the join button become a member here on Asian Gash anything from just a pound a month so if you like to do that that'd be amazing if you can't though no worries just smash the like button the subscribe button and the bell notification absolutely free to do so if you do enjoy the videos honestly please it's just really easy for you to do that and uh, like I say more people are liking the videos seeing the videos the more well it's only a small amount of money but the small amount of money from YouTube gets a tiny bit bigger, which obviously goes to a good cause at the moment. So that'd be amazing. And as always, if you feel like you know someone who would enjoy the video, make sure you share it with them. And above anything else, guys, I just hope that you're generally doing well at the moment because, like I say, the world's in a bit of a difficult place for the last, like, three years, if not everything else that's been going on before that. So I hope you guys are doing well. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember until next time to stay safe, wash your hands, stay hygienic, stay safe. The other things I say, wear a mask if you got to. And then beyond that is remember, more importantly, is that Nagash is all. And all is one in Nagash.